still do things on the side, like I run a food company, I make ketchup and hot sauce in Vancouver, wow. clean food company, and Tavis does a lot of work with guitar lessons online. And Courtney and I play at a pub in Peterborough a few nights a week. Which pub? Riley's. Okay. You know Riley's? I, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I've lived in Peterborough for a long time, yeah. so. Yeah. It's a good spot, yeah. My older brother plays there four nights a week. When, uh, when we're home, we play there a couple nights a week. Just acoustic. Nice. Sing harmonies. We yeah. probably know all the same people. Oh, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. 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 That's Being awesome. Peter Norwood and, and Peter Rhodes. Oh, cool. Yeah. 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 Music keeps us pretty busy, though. Like, we, we put out uh, a record, the record with Torn Down on it, uh, just in September. So that was most of last year. And two years before that, we did a full length called Rise Up. And, and we've been touring both those records kind of along the way. So it's just like. Yeah, we don't we don't have to see each other because we see each other a lot. <laughs> but Johnny, I read somewhere that you started as a busker. It's true. But but not in Vancouver though. In Vancouver, yeah, I moved out from Alberta. That's my home, and uh, I didn't know how to play guitar and sing at the same time. I love doing both, but I just you know wanted to, want st <laughs> I still suck. Yeah, I still, still <laughs> <listen. laughs> But uh, yeah, I just went and took a guitar and sat on the street in Vancouver and, and you know, slowly started learning how to play and writing and, and just doing that on the street. And it was fun. It was a good, it was a really uh, a captive and, and uncaptive audience to have yeah. people walking by and, and getting feedback and just, uh, you know, and giving me money for beer. Right. That was great. But also learning how an audience reacts because, I mean, you're getting an instant reaction every oh. time you step out onto a sidewalk, right? Totally. Yeah, and I used to do all originals on the street. And then one day, I was um, a huge uh, Pearl Jam fan, so I started playing Better Man, and uh, all of a sudden my guitar case was just full of money, and I closed <laughs> up shop, and I'm like, oh man, <laughs> our songs suck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Okay, so I read something else about you guys, and, and it said, great art is 90% perspiration, 10% inspiration. So I have to ask, what is your inspiration? I think life in life, general, I guess, we, yeah. We talk a lot, we're in a van or a bus, you know, all the time together, and we talk a lot about, you know, the purpose of life and what we're doing here, and uh, and just the trials and tribulations, like even just today, you know, and yesterday, we, we had some issues with our, ve our vehicle at the beginning of the tour, we're all just scratching our heads like, what does all this mean, you know, like, <laughs> is the world trying to tell us we shouldn't be doing this tour, but we, we talk about that all the time, so I think... Um, you know, our fan, our fan base is called the diehards, and, and we grow with them, and I think a lot of them are going through, um, you know, we, we're basically friends with them all online now, on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram, and, and so we go, you know, we see them helping each other out and uh, almost using our songs as a bit of a, a band-aid or, or um, you know, a, some form of medicine to help them get through the struggles of life, so I think that's why we do a lot of this, and that's why it's fun to let people know that, that uh, it's not just cakewalk for us either, you know, like we're having the, our ups and downs and we all are together. Mm -hmm. I get the sense that there's quite a brotherhood between you four. Oh, and, us, and us three. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. You don't feel like you're part of the brotherhood? You feel like I'm the dad. You're the dad. Yeah, yeah. I'm the one telling her to get in the van and it's, hurry up. It's the bigger <laughs> yeah. beard though. Maybe that's yeah. what it is. I'm, I'm, the, I'm the leader, but no, but, we, we are very tight. Yeah. But to audiences, they like to feel a part of something, and if you have a brotherhood or a, a, a unit, people, I don't, they gravitate to that a little bit stronger. I think so, I think people can sense it yeah. a mile away, you know, on stage. I think people see us and they realize we're having a good time and we do yeah. love each other and we're doing what we do. Nice. You know, for a good reason. But I think that's not the case with some bands. They're just kind of people aren't getting along or they're struggling a little bit or they're just doing it for the cash or whatever it is but that's not certainly not the case with us right on yeah i think it shows in the music though don't you think absolutely it shows in everything i mean it's like anything in life you know if you yeah. if, if there's an unhappy couple at a restaurant everyone knows yeah <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> the if, tension. if there's a couple on their first date and they're you know in love you know everyone knows so just oh, come on you probably dined with someone that you weren't having a happy relationship with at one point oh just just last night oh, really? <laughs> no, I'm just one i want to hear <laughs> no yeah and that's the whole thing right is uh, you do have ups and downs in life and and you can't always be um on your first date you know and you can't always be just um, getting out of a relationship that's horrible, but some of our songs, like completely, and you know, songs like that, are about getting out of the worst relationship you've ever been in. But how is it when you hit the stage? Do you not feel that everything changes as soon as you hit the stage? 
Yeah, I mean, we're floating up there usually. Yeah. yeah. How was it opening up for Skillet? That must have been pretty cool. It was great. Last night was first show in Vancouver and it was amazing start to the tour. Yeah. Great band, great turnout. You know, it was on Granville, a place called Venue. Tons of people there. It's pretty high energy and uh, great start to the tour. So nice. we'll be, yeah, we'll be in Edmonton tomorrow night and going to Winnipeg with them. Now, I'm curious about Skillet because it being sort of a Christian rock band, mm -hmm. the first thing I thought is like, you know, you guys Christian rock band, do they bring Christian rock bands on tour with them or? No, no, but I think uh, we've toured with them before. You know, they definitely are a Christian rock band, but I don't think they're picking opening bands based on that, you know what I mean? We've, uh, so I don't need to curtail my swearing and drinking or anything? <laughs> oh no, we okay. gotta pick her up a notch with us. Yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah. you know, I know where you're from, so. <laughs> <laughs> you know how we roll. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We went out with Skillet in uh, 2011 on an a thing called Avalanche. That was pretty fun. And yeah. we got to know them a little and uh, good people, you know. Like John and I went for a run on one of their days off and just kind of got to know each other better. And it, that whole tour was kind of like, uh, an introduction to a lot of bands. We were uh, Stone Sour, Theory of a Dead Man, uh, Skillet, and Hailstorm. Right. So just such a great yeah. group of people. And very unified bands. Like every band you mentioned, I mean, even Hailstorm with Lizzie and, and her brother. What's his brother's name? Uh, Marcia. Yeah, right. You yeah. know, very, very unified, cohesive bunch of people. That's, totally. that's interesting. RJ's wild. We, we love, like, we love those guys. <laughs> we, we did Ship Rocked with, uh, with them recently. Oh, wow. Our, RJ and I slipped away into, uh, like, this penthouse suite. There was this, I don't know what it was, some sort of private party. But at that point in the night, you're just, and then. you're going <laughs> to the party and play piano. Yeah. 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 And the drinks. Remember we were talking <laughs> off air about guys wearing lingerie? Yes. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> 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 Do another. <laughs> <laughs> no, wears a <laughs> no, we there was a baby grand up there and a bunch of people and it was just like this kind of weird party. But RJ and I just did an impromptu uh, piano vocal harmonies set together. What did you sing? We, oh, I have no idea. We were so <laughs> <hammered>. <laughs> cover, cover medley. <laughs> but it was a lot of fun, and that just speaks to the type of people there. You know, just get get on a piano and have some fun. Okay, so question for you. You've talked about bands that you played before. How important is that to get on somebody else's bill, a more successful band? Does it does it help propel your your image or or your fan base? Absolutely. I think it's uh, it's just about getting in front of people. You know what I mean? I, we feel pretty confident in our music and our live show. So I think for us, we always want to get in front of as many people as possible. Yeah. And just because we can usually seem to do our thing and people get it and like it, you know what I mean? Does so, it work that way though? After you, you play with a, a big band like that, do somebody else call you up and say, hey, come out on tour with us? Well, that can happen, but I think more importantly, when we go back to those towns, you know, for playing to a thousand people opening for Skillet or whatever, next time we go and do our own show in that town, Maybe a hundred of those people will come to see us, you know? Right. So you kind of slowly try to build it that way. Keep going back to these towns. And, That's and, fantastic. Yeah. And it's, it's great brotherhood, great touring with uh, cool people. So I have the new EP in yeah. my hand. Yeah. Dun, dun, dun. Do, 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 never do. more. Uh, never more. Tell me about it. <clears throat> never more. Well, there's you should just play it. many meanings. Yeah, we can, we'll play Never More for you for sure. Um, never more is the name of the Raven in, in that one of my favorite Edgar Allan Poe stories. And ravens are a big oh, deal. Smart too. <laughs> Look at you. <laughs> you that? that would go that far. Maybe I'm actually reading read. off my head. <laughs> That's the only time Cody ever piped up is telling you you're not. Know? Yeah. 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 Just book on tape. Yeah. We just have a lot of history with ravens and it's always been a part of our artwork. And I think it's just, even just being from BC, it's just like this thing that we all kind of have in common up here, the crows and the ravens. And uh, yeah, it's uh, it's also um, you know Edgar Allan Poe's writing kind of inspires uh, me as a lyricist and a writer just to lean towards the dark side sometimes. I was going to say that's pretty deep and dark, but then again, you are the art of dying, so um, we're pretty evil. <laughs> you don't look evil. Look at that smile on your face. Kidding, yeah. Can't you look sweet? You're not evil. No, it's a bit of a breakup song too because uh, we actually wrote that. Um, when Tab was going through a rough time, and what was going on? You can uh, tell us. I won't get into the details, but let's just say I was a few minutes late for the session because I was on the phone for half an hour, and it was not a very good call. But uh, the song came out of it, so that was a huge silver lining. You know, it was a pretty rough day. And so uh, was it, it a lover, or did you lose your house? No, it was a relationship. Yeah, it was an ex. Yeah. 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 
but it, all is fine now. Everything's great. You, know, but, uh, you live song, in Las Vegas. How could it not be? To get, it's to your get that song out of it, though, is pretty special, right? Because you go through something horrible, but the song comes out. So we find that a lot in our music. It just comes out of a bad situation. We, we get this gem of a song, right? Sometimes. Yeah. And the lyric itself, just being that empowering, like it actually describes a situation where I don't need you anymore. And it's the self-empowerment of like, it's, you know, because yeah. needing someone and, and, and missing them is probably the worst feeling ever. And finally getting to the point where you don't need someone anymore, you can say that to yourself say that to them. We're kind of saying that to her in this song, in many ways, you know? Wow. There's huge yeah. strength in that. Yeah. That's very inspiring. She doesn't like this song. She doesn't. I <laughs> she's not a fan of it. Until we've made it. She didn't buy the album. Yeah. <laughs> well, she's not getting any residuals, is she? No, she's not getting anything anymore. Well, then. <laughs> yeah. We should play that for you. You want to hear it? I would love to hear it. Is, what, do you, what do you want to play? What were you guys thinking? We'll play Nevermore. Yes. Then let's play Nevermore. Done. Shall we? Let's get it on. Do it. Never more. 